Hello, welcome back to Learn Economy. As you all know, we are actually on a series on uh, discussions of the various endogenous growth models. So we have been discussing various endogenous growth model. In today's session, we are going to discuss that particular endogenous growth model which is put forward by Romer. So this model is known as the Romer's model or the Romer model. So let's get started. <coughs> So what uh, Romer has done is that he had uh, presented his ideas in his paper which was published in 1986. So um, he uh, in his first paper on endogenous growth which was published in 1986 present uh, a variant uh, of uh, what is presented by Arrow. We have discussed Arrow's um, learning by doing model already. So you might be uh, remembering what Arrow's model is all about. So, uh, for those people who are uh, who have not watched uh, Arrow's model, uh, I'll be giving for those people who have not watched those uh, that particular video, I'll be giving the links of uh, uh, link of Arrow's model um, video in the description box so that you can watch that and come back to see what Romer has uh, uh, has to tell about about um, endogenous growth model and how he has presented a variant version of Arrow's model. Okay, so. This particular model or the model put forward by Romer is all about learning by investment. Arrow's model was on learning by doing but Romer's model is on uh, learning by investment. And this person Romer he had assumed that creation of knowledge is actually a side product of investment. And this uh, in the, that way he could uh, relate creation of knowledge and you know, investment. So this is the equation that uh, Romer has given uh, with respect to his endogenous growth model. He takes knowledge as an input in the production function. So he says that uh, his equation is like uh, y is equal to a into r, f, r, i, k, i, l, i. So let's see what all these variables telling to us or, or what all these variables uh, all about. Here y shows aggregate output in the economy. That is, when I say aggregate output, it is the output produced by all the sectors, all the fact, all the firms in the economy. Now, coming to A, this is a public stock of knowledge from research and development. Okay. Now, R is the uh, uh, R is the development aspect, and RI, when it comes to RI, it is a stock of results from expenditure on research and development by the firm I. So, I is the firm. Okay. Now coming to KI, KI as well as LI, we can see these two things are capital stock and labor stock respectively. KI stands for capital stock and LI stands for labor stock. So since we are attaching the uh, uh, element I here, we have to see that capital, uh, uh, sorry, KI as well as LI, these are the capital stock of firm I. Okay, so that is the case. Now see what are the assumptions with respect to Roma's model? Roma has assumed that the production function F, this is homogeneous of degree 1, okay. And this is with respect to all the inputs, whether it is in terms of capital or whether it is in terms of labor or whether it is in terms of research or whatever it may be. All these, uh, in, uh, in terms of all these things, uh, the production function is of degree 1. It is homogeneous and it is of degree 1. And also he had assumed that Ri, Ri is something, uh, Ri we have seen that it is stock of results from expenditure on research and development. And this uh, Romer, as per Romer, this is a rival good. It's not a public good, it's a rival good. Okay. <coughs> and uh, an important thing is that Romer has taken three elements in his model. Uh, first of all, he had taken the role of externalities, then he has taken the role of increasing returns in the production of output and also he had taken the role of diminishing returns in the production of new knowledge. We have to see how uh, these three factors influence Romer's model. So if you have not understood the meaning of externalities, you, you can refer to my previous videos where I have uh, discussed uh, the meaning of externalities. Uh, so. <clears throat> I will be providing the links of uh, the videos on externalities in the description box. So, so please do go and watch that and come back to see how um, and Roma has taken the idea of externalities and how he has used 
the idea of externalities in this model so extern externality simply means that uh, there are um, uh, the action taken by one economic agent would be having some kind of effects on some other economic agents so whether it is positive effect or negative effect, it can be both positive or negative or it can be either or uh, positive or it can be either negative so uh, it can take uh, in either ways so whether it is positive or negative that uh, this externality or the effect uh, cost or uh, effect of action caused by one economic agent on another economic agent cannot be expressed in terms of price or cost so this is a main problem with externality we cannot uh, we cannot compute a numerical value for externality so that is a main problem with respect to externality i have discussed in detail the concept of externality in different different videos i'll be providing the links of these in the description box so that you can understand the concept of externality in detail <coughs> Coming to the increase in returns with respect to the production of output, we can see that when you increase uh, out your input by one unit, your output would be increasing by more than one unit. That is what is um, uh, meant by increasing returns. Coming to diminishing returns, that means that when you increase your input by one unit, you are uh, your production output would be increasing by less than one unit. So in the case of increasing returns, uh, when you increase your output, uh, increase your input by one unit, your output would be increasing by more than one unit. But in the case of diminishing return, when you increase your input by one unit, your output would be increasing by less than one unit. So these are the difference between increasing and diminishing returns. Now, as per Rommel, it is spillovers from research efforts uh, for, by a firm that will lead to the creation of new knowledge by other firms. That means that unless it's spillovers, it, it means externalities only. So when some firms form, uh, when some firms in uh, some firms invest in research and development, that the, these ideas would be borrowed by some other firms to create some new knowledge. Okay. So that is uh, how uh, he has taken, Rama has taken the uh, idea of externalities and used in his model. Uh, he says that new research technology by a firm spill over instantly across entire economy. So that means that the, the, some kind of research and development would be taken place in, in terms in, in one particular sector or in one particular firm. But the effect of this research and development would be ensured by the whole economy. In his model, uh, new knowledge is considered to be the ultimate determinant of long-run economic growth and this in turn is determined by investment in research as well as technology or research technology. As per Romer, research is something which exhibited diminishing returns, uh, which means that investment in research will not double knowledge. But what happens here is that some firms would be investing in research and this will not be the exclusive beneficiary of increasing in not increase in knowledge this means that there may be some other firms in the economy that uh, the, uh, who which also make use of the new knowledge and this is mainly due to the inadequacy of patent production and increase in their production we know that whenever we introduce a new technology or new uh, way of producing things in order to prevent other firms from do other firms from copying this particular technology or this particular invention what we have to do is that we should get patent if we have patent rights with us then no firm has got a right to copy our knowledge or our uh, innovation so so long as we do not have a patent right that means that some other firms has right to copy this particular invention or innovation that is why uh, today we could see that uh, there there can be several conflicts between different firms related to copying of technology and that is why different firms are spending a lot of money in order to get patent rights as soon as they uh, go for a new invention or innovation so coming back to Rama's model we can see that the production of goods from increased knowledge can display increasing returns and competitive equilibrium is considered to be something which is consistent with the increasing aggregate returns as a result of externalities so Rama is actually trying to um, uh, it include the element of externalities, increasing returns, diminishing returns, etc. in his model and he is explaining how he is incorporating all these kinds of things in his model. So, 
by now you might have understood how Rama has incorporated the elements of externalities, increase in returns and diminishing returns in his model. So, Rama here had taken the investment in research technology as something which is endogenous. And this is in terms of the acquisition of new knowledge by rational profit maximization firm. So, um, I, I hope I, I don't need to make you clear about what is rational, uh, rational uh, elements with respect to economic agents because um, uh, by the by this time you might be very much familiar with what is rationality and all the basic thing that you would be learning when you uh, come in contact with uh, the economics as a discipline so what i mean by this term uh, rationality is that every economic agent would be uh, rational with his decision making so when I say rationality with respect to a consumer, the rational decision would be profit maximization. Uh, the rational decision would be um, utility maximization. Maximization when it comes to producer, his uh, rational decision would be to maximize his profit. So in the case of consumer, the rational decision is to maximize his utility. In the case of producer, the rational decision is to maximize his profit. So what uh, whether um, it is consumer or a producer or some other kind of economic agents the, the rational decision would be to maximize their objective function so every economic agent would be having a, an objective function and his or her rational decision would be to maximize that particular objective functions so that's all about uh, rama's model i i request you to like share and subscribe to this channel for more videos and you can be a part of my telegram channel and telegram group to discuss your doubts i'll be providing the links of these in the description box so that you can join by clicking on to the links and you can make uh, your discussions in the group uh, in the channel uh, in the way you like so now uh, also uh, if you want me to do uh, videos on certain 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 topics you can make uh, that specify uh, sp uh, specified in the comment box you can and just uh, <clears throat> make a request in the comment box so i'll be taking it up i'll be picking it up from there and make a video i'm not telling that as soon as i get up uh, as soon as I get a topic, I'll be making videos. But uh, I have there have been many pending requests, and I am taking it one by one. So um, anyway, I'll be doing a video within a month uh, after getting this particular uh, request or something. Uh, in the uh, anyway, I'll be taking it up. But uh, I'm not telling that soon after I get. Uh, if today I get a uh, come, I mean if today I get a request, I'll be doing it on the next day. I'm not telling th in that manner, but. Within a month, I'll be definitely doing. So that's all about today. Again, I'm requesting you to like, share and subscribe to this channel. And you can share this with your friends as well. And also, um, again, uh, for non-subscribers, uh, please do consider subscribing. And I could see that many of my viewers are, my no are non-subscribers. So it's a kind of help that you could give uh, back to me. So please do help uh, by subscribing to this channel. And... Um, uh, sharing the video with your friends that's all for today thank you for watching